Hello children, welcome back to physics class. So in the last video we were discussing about the principle of flotation. So in that we have seen three cases. Do you remember? Have you watched the video? Yes, what are those three cases? The first one is the weight of the body is greater than the buoyant force. What will happen to the body? The body will sink in the water or the liquid. The second case we have seen the weight of the body is less than the buoyant force then the body floats partially submerged in the liquid. So the third one we have seen the weight of the body is equal to the buoyant force then the body floats just inside the liquid. Right. So in today's class we are going to see the application of flotation. So what are the application we are going to see the first one is flotation of an iron ship. So you have observed that the ship will float in the water but if you see a nail made up of iron if you drop it in the water what will happen it will sink right but a ship made of iron does not. The reason is that the nail is a solid and the density of the iron okay or that uh, nail is greater than that of water. The weight of the nail is more than the buoyant force. So when the weight of the body is greater than the buoyant force, what will happen to the body? It will sink in the water or the liquid, right? So since the weight of the nail is more than the buoyant force of water, so it will sink in the water, right? So on the other hand, the ship is hollow, okay? The, there will be empty space inside the ship okay so that contains air this makes the average density of a ship less than that of water therefore a ship floats on a water okay so why does a ship float on a water so you can see some bodies when dropped in water sink such as iron nail or a stone on the other hand some bodies even if the same weight as that of those that sink float on water such as empty plastic bottle and even a ship so i have told you the reason because the ship is hollow and the empty space contains air so you can see the volume is more right so you know that formula for density density is equals to mass by volume so when the volume is increasing the density will decrease so if the density is less than the buoyant force of that of water then the object will float on the water so you should keep it in mind that when the density of the object is less than the density of water or the liquid in which it is placed then the object will float in the water since the density of the ship and the bottle is less than that of water then it is floating on the water okay let's see the next one flotation of man okay so it is easier for a person to swim in a sea water than in river water so do you know what is the reason? The reason is that the sea water contains salt and so its density is more than the density of river water. So the density of sea water is more than the density of river water. The weight of a man gets balanced by the less immersed part of the body in the sea water as compared to that in river water. Thus it is easier to swim in a sea water than in river water so the sea water has more density compared with the river water so when you are swimming in the sea water the buoyant force will be more the buoyant force is nothing but the upward force right so if the upward force is more you can swim easily right so since the upward force or the buoyant force is more in sea water compared with the river water you can swim easily in sea water than in river water okay so let's see the next one flotation of ice on water so why ice floats on water okay a piece of ice floats on water with its 9 tenth part inside the water that is 9 by 10 okay if you are making 10 parts of a ice cube 9 parts of it will be inside the water only one tenth of the ice cube will be floating on the water outside the water it will be the reason is that the density of the ice is 0.9 gram per centimeter cube and the density of water is one 
gram per centimeter cube that is why a piece of ice floats on water with its 9 10th part inside the water okay hence the weight of the water displaced by 9 10th part of ice immersed inside the water becomes equal to the total weight of the ice piece okay so we'll see the next one submarine submarine can be made to dive or to raise to the surface of the water as and when desired a submarine can both sink and float in a water the reason is that a submarine is a water tight boat which can travel under water like a ship a submarine is provided with a water tank to make the submarine dive the tanks are filled with water so that the average density of the submarine becomes greater than the density of sea water and it sinks okay if you are taking the cross section of the water tank it will be like this so it will be having a opening so from this if you are letting the water inside the density of the submarine will become more than the density of sea water then the object the submarine will sink inside the water so to make the submarine rise or to float to the surface of water these tanks are emptied so if you empty the water from here so the density of the submarine will become less than the density of sea water then the submarine will float on the surface of the water this makes the average density of the submarine less than the density of sea water so the submarine rises up to the surface of water so did you understand how the submarine rise and sinks inside the water so it has a ballast tank or the water tanks if the water tanks are filled with water the density of the submarine will increase okay if the density of the submarine is more than the density of sea water then it will sink for that what we are doing we are letting the water inside the water tank and if you want the submarine to float on the surface of the sea water what you have to do you have to make the average density of submarine less than the density of sea water for this what you have to do is you have to empty the water tanks if you are emptying the water tank then the density of the submarine will become less than the density of sea water then the submarine will float on the surface of the sea water this is how the submarine floats and sinks on the sea water okay so next we will see the iceberg so what is this iceberg a very huge and large pieces of ice floating on sea water are called icebergs so icebergs are very dangerous for the ship why because the density of the ice is less than the density of sea water the density of the ice is 0.9 g per centimeter cube and the density of the sea water is 1.02 g per centimeter cube hence an iceberg floats in the sea water with its large portion submerged inside the water and only a little portion of it is above the surface of water thus a ship can collide with the invisible part of the iceberg under the surface of water hence it is dangerous for the ship next we will see the whales okay the whales can sink or rise at their will whales are sea animals they have a special organ in their body which is called the swim bladder in order to come to the surface of water they fill the bladder with air this decreases the average density of the whale so it rises to the surface so if it has to float it will fill the bladder with air so to dive into the sea they empty the bladder this increases the average density of the whale so it sinks so when it wants to float it will fill the bladder with air so if it is sinking then it will empty the bladder then it will sink that means the average density of the whale will increase okay if it is emptying the bladder the average density of the whale will increase then it will sink inside the water okay next we will see the balloon so hydrogen or helium filled balloon raises in air the reason is that the density of these gases is less than the density of air 
therefore the buoyant force experienced by the balloon due to air becomes greater than the weight of the balloon hence the balloon raises up under the influence of the net upward force that's all for today and in the next class we will try to solve some problems so we'll meet you in the next class